In this short video, I want to cover another basic feature of bond markets, and that is the convertible. The bond starts as a bond and then becomes an equity later. So let's look at the basic features, how common these things actually are, and were you interested in them, how you could go about getting hold of them. So with no more ado, bonds versus shares. A very quick reminder, first of all. This is going to be a hybrid, a convertible, something that starts as one and could end up as the other. So what are the basic features? Why do people buy bonds? Well, I deal with this in more detail in other videos, but in a nutshell, you've got a limited but known capital return. And that's because bonds are redeemed on their maturity date at their so-called nominal value. So if you buy a bond and hold it all the way through to maturity, stress that, you do know what your capital upside or even downside is likely to be. You've got a known income stream in most cases because fixed income securities make up the majority of the bonds market and that, as the name suggests, gives you a fixed annual income, let's say. Um, there are no voting rights. These are not shares. You do not have equity participation in the company as a shareholder would have. They can be secured uh, and that is basically saying that unlike a share, a bond can be attached to an asset. So if you've got a mortgage, for example, that loan is attached to your property, so the bank can seize the property, sell it and take its funds back. Well, corporate issuers can issue bonds on a similar basis. You can have secured bonds and that gives the holder uh, basically a few extra uh, safety nets in, in the event of a problem or a threat to the issuer's financial stability. And they rank above shares. What that means, in a nutshell, is that interest payments have to be made before shareholders get dividends. Now, shares on the other hand, slightly different. So unlimited capital upside, in theory, a share price can go up to any price. There's no fixed redemption value as there is with a bond. Uncertain income stream, dividends unfortunately can be cut and sometimes are cut. You get voting rights, you're an equity participant. There's no security in the same way as there is with bonds. You can't normally securitize shares and they rank below bonds. So that introduces a little bit of extra risk potentially. In other words, dividends can't be paid until interest payments or coupons have been made on bonds. And if a company goes bust, equity shareholders normally last in the queue. So a fairly clear cut distinction between the two types. Is it possible therefore to create something that starts as one but may morph into the other? And the answer is yes. It's called a convertible. And as the name suggests, this is something been around for a long time that at a conversion date or a series of specified conversion dates can basically either remain as a bond if the conversion terms don't look attractive or become equity, become shares at some sort of agreed conversion ratio. And these things have been around, been around for some time. Now it's a relatively, relatively small market compared to the mainstream bond market but nevertheless there are funds out there that specialize in buying these things and some investors can get hold of them on an individual basis. So, taking a quick look, uh, one of the issues with this market, if you're a UK investor, is that it is dominated by the US. In other words, the majority of issuance is in the US and that introduces a little bit of sort of currency risk on top of any other risks that you look at. But in theory, they can be issued more or less anywhere in the world. Now, what's in it? What's the point? Why would an issuer, first of all, go to the trouble of setting up this thing where they're basically raising money in the form of bonds only to have the people who've given them the money suddenly make a decision they want to switch into equity? It all sounds like a bit of a faff, so there's got to be something in it for the issuer. Well, issuers can use it as a way of raising cheap early stage debt finance because if you offer an investor a kicker, you say, well, this thing starts off as a bond, in other words, you just lend us money, we pay you a fixed return, but you've got the opportunity to convert what you're holding into shares later, that's attractive because presumably there's something in it. In other words, investors want that unlimited capital appreciation that could come later so the company can offer a lower interest rate on the initial bond. And that's quite handy. Maybe any way to raise funds at sensible price. If you're a young, uh, growing, fast growing company, that may be the way you can get hold of funding initially at a price that you can afford to pay in cash flow terms. And if, the holders of those bonds choose to convert to equity, you're never going to have to pay them off in the same way as you would with a conventional bond. So there's a kind of cash flow saving further down the line. Holders need to have you know, some reason to buy these things. So for them, it can be an exit route. So someone who's prepared to fund the company in its early stages all right, by putting money in 
by converting into equity, suddenly, if that equity is listed and can be sold, that gets them out. Potential for future upside on conversions. In other words, they're speculating that converting is going to be well worth their while, switching from bonds with that known limited capital upside to equities where the upside is higher. And they also know that if things go wrong, as long as they don't go too far wrong, by holding a bond, you have at least got limited downside, provided the bond is eventually redeemed. So you've got a bit of protection in there, if you like, on the downside, and it brings a bit of a diversification. Uh, convertibles behave differently to other securities. They sound a little bit different, and they are a little bit different. Now, a bit of jargon here, um, but quite a useful bit of jargon. I'll just bust one piece of jargon in this video, the so-called conversion premiums. Banded around a lot in the convertibles market. If you hear it, all it means is this. Um, best to proceed by example, if you could convert a thousand pounds of a bond into 500 shares, very straightforward maths there, the implied conversion price is two pounds. So what? Well, here's the point. If the current share price is one pound 50, the so-called conversion premium is 50p, or 33%, it's often given the percentage. Again, so what? What that's telling you is that, roughly speaking, the current share price needs to rise by around 33% from where it is at the moment before the people who've got convertibles will think about converting. In other words, it's better for them at the moment to just hold them and have them redeemed than it is to switch them into shares. Because why would you switch something that is rough, you know, roughly worth two pound into something that's worth only one pound fifty. Well, you wouldn't, would you? Oh, that'd be a bit silly. So you want the company's share price to come up a bit before you consider conversion. And that matters. We won't go into all the detail here. We can maybe do that in a future video if there's demand. That matters because the bigger the premium, the bigger that percentage, the bigger the gap, the less likely conversion is. And therefore, if you've got one of these things, the more likely it is it will behave like a similar bond issued by the company than the company's shares. Because people look at these things and say, is it a bond, is it a share? You know, do I get more guidance by looking at what's happening with the company's bonds in the market or the company's shares? The answer, the answer depends heavily on that conversion premium. So there's a bit of jargon that's worth knowing. Premiums on issue can be as much as 25 to 40%, because of course, you know, on issue, the company's looking to basically get a cheap source of finance, and that conversion premium could therefore be reasonably high initially, and close later. What affects prices? Well, this is just worth knowing in summary. I've put four factors here. So you're holding a convertible. If the company's share price rises, maybe profits have improved, that's going to tend to push up the price of a convertible bond too, all other things being equal. Um, if the credit spread narrows, I deal with those in other videos, so maybe the credit quality of the bond or the issuer is improved. Again, that should make a convertible potentially more attractive. So I'll tend to put the price, push the price up. Very simple table I've got here. If interest rates rise or are expected to rise, perhaps because inflation's on the up, central banks need to think about doing something about it, that's going to tend to adversely impact the price of convertibles, and not just convertibles potentially. As volatility rises, perhaps because the market's getting a little bit nervous, so um, the price is likely to rise too. Why? Because, if you think about it, if a convertible gives you the right to convert into shares and the company share price is getting more volatile, potentially it might be more likely to get above the level where holders of these things think, oh, actually maybe I will convert. In practice, companies can put um, little caps in to stop that uh, conversion becoming too expensive for them. But I won't do all that in this particular video. How to buy them. If you like the look of convertibles, the, the bad news is that actually the, getting hold of them as a, as a normal retail investor is quite difficult. The market's relatively small. It's also relatively specialist, as you can imagine. But there are ETFs and funds around um, that specialize in these things, subject to, um, as I say, minimum amounts, which tend to be quite high on the individual uh, security side and lower, if they exist at all, on the funds and ETF side. So for most investors, that is going to be the more likely way in. But for some, you know, if they can put up with the hurdles, direct investment is also possible. So there it is, relatively small part of the fixed income market. We will come across it in the context of uh, funds and ETFs. And just a summary of what convertibles are basically all about.